and not just your ATM. This okay. Is to keep in mind, we are on the verge of an age where by the year 2020, there are going to be 50 billion smart appliances in America and the world. Wow. What are we talking about? We're talking about how now everything will have its own little computer chip tied into your computer so that as they now show in some of these commercials, you can be sitting in one house and pick up your cell phone and uh, at another house, remotely, lock the doors, turn off the water, fix the toilet, uh, turn off the television set, and so on. You'll be able to command every appliance in your house what to do. You'll be able to see if the refrigerator is at the temperature you want or the air conditioning is and change those things. Now, that is very convenient for you or me, but every one of those is also an opportunity for hackers because all those things have to be tied into your centralized computer system. And when they're tied into a centralized computer system, that means that they've already found a refrigerator being sold to people that had a hacker chip built into it. So when you plugged it in and it reached your computer, it would hack your computer for somebody. I mean, a refrigerator hacking your computer. <laughs> they have now found these things in soda machines. Wow. You pull out your credit card and you want to buy a Coke because they cost that much now. Uh, they've found chips in soda machines, vending machines, that will send data about your credit card to some unknown third party. Holy I mean, smokes. Hacking, hacking is already such a big industry. I mean, cybercrime now brings in more revenue to criminals around the world than the sales of all illicit drugs combined. Wow. Lowell Ponte joins us today here on the program. Coast to coast, to border to border, he joins us live talking about your ATM could turn into a one-armed bandit. Uh, just think about this. When you withdraw or deposit your money, it might turn into a one-armed bandit. It's going to be able to steal your cash and your identity. Experts have called what might be about to happen an Armageddon and an xp apocalypse, as uh, Lowell was telling us earlier, uh, with the potential to bring disaster to, to savers and uh, in our economy. Now, why did Microsoft decide to dump the XP operating system? Uh, well, it's old-fashioned, and they wanted to be able to sell people their 7 and 8 operating systems. So you more or less have to obsolete the old one. I mean, XP, for a long time, people would not buy the new programs because XP was the most relatively bug-free of all the Microsoft systems. And that rather annoyed them. They just assumed we had to go spend a few hundred dollars and buy something new. Uh, so this is one way of forcing you to do it. And the challenge we now have, you see, we're entering yeah. a world. Oh, oh, Craig and I, you know, as you know, we write books together. Oh, we yeah. We put together a new 32-page white paper for running our book out this summer. Both of them are called Don't Bank on It. And both of them look at the 19 horrifying vulnerabilities uh, in your bank. You know, when I was a little kid, Jiggy, I remember my mom taking me down to a Bank of America. I was five years old, and I got my first passbook. And, oh, it was so safe, and I had $5 in there, and it was earning real interest. Well, when you go down to the bank today, what do you get instead? You get a bank account that pays you nothing. It pays you bupkis. Uh, so... Therefore, what reason do you even have to be there? And it's no longer secure. It now has these 19 major threats leveled at it that we talk about. And those range everything from foreign hackers to yeah. cyber warfare to governments wanting to get at your money. In fact, there, there's often very little difference between government and hackers. The Chinese People's Liberation Army has a whole division dedicated just to cyber warfare to raiding the computers or, or damaging the computers of potential enemy nations like us or people who have a lot of money. It used to be that bank robbers used to have to be like the Dalton gang. You know, once upon a time in the late 1800s, they rode into, what was it, Northfield, Can uh, Northfield, Minnesota, and they went in and robbed the bank. But as they came out, all the people of the town had gathered and gotten their rifles, and they were sitting in second-story windows around the bank, and they just shot the gang to pieces as they came out of the bank. Uh, wow. Nowadays, nowadays, the people who are going to rob your bank account are on the other side of the world. They're beyond U.S. jurisdiction in most cases. 
Yeah. Yet, because we have made ourselves so dependent on computers, and we're now going to a whole new level of it. I mean, you're not going to have your can opener remotely controlled from a thousand miles away because it's tied into your computer. You're going to have your TV and everything else with a brain. I mean, we'll have smart appliances, often smarter than the people who are using wow. them. Wow. And all of those are <laughs> hacking opportunities. You can hack a computer system through all of those. This is what's so spooky. And so we're making ourselves more and more dependent, uh, dependent on those things, even as we have just learned in recent days that on Wall Street, they now have these high-speed computers that can detect when a wave of orders is coming in for a stock. They, in a millisecond, or, a, or one and a half milliseconds, can step in front of the purchase order and buy the stock first electronically and then turn around and sell you that stock at a price that's been bumped up a little bit. Wow. And this happens millions of times uh, every day. This is fascinating, my friend. Now, wow. One thing. The, the second thing is, of course, we've just found that the 12 largest banks are being sued, allegedly for rigging the foreign exchange markets over the last decade, foreign exchange not only in currency but in commodities like copper, gold, what have you. Yeah. So, so the banks are able to do all kinds of things. See, see most people, Jiggy, don't understand that today, not when I was a little kid, mind you, but today when you go in and you give the bank your money and you open a deposit, you probably have the naive idea that that's actually your money. Yeah. But under today's <laughs> law, it isn't. <laughs> under today's banking law, this is what the people in Cyprus discovered to their horror a year ago. They have a, a legal concept now called bail-ins. And the legal doctrine now is when you give the bank your money, it becomes the property of the bank. It becomes an unsecured asset of the bank. In other words, you've basically given the bank an interest-free loan that's highly risky and not profitable at all to you. Why in the world you're doing that, I don't know. But when the government in Cyprus, in the Mediterranean island a year ago, decided, we, we need some money, they said, I know, we'll just grow, grab the assets of the two major banks here. And they did. But under the new law, you see, your bank account is one of those assets. The governments literally have the power to grab your bank accounts just because they're in a bank. And to say that's because the bank owes us money. Uh, in this case, the government seized everybody's bank account, expecting to collect uh, huge amounts of tax from what everybody had deposited. They finally had to back off for the poorest people because it turned out their accounts were actually insured. Wow. 100,000 euros. <laughs> but what they, well, really wanted, what they really wanted yes. was rich Russian oligarchs. Well, let, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's leave it right there for a couple seconds. We need to take a quick time out. When we come back, I, I, I want to expand on that point, Lowell. So just hold the line. We'll be back with you here in a few moments. Back with more. Lowell Ponte on the way. Did you ever see a fashion item or gadget in a movie or TV show you wanted to buy? Plotify is the platform for clothes and gadgets in movies and TV shows you love and want to buy. Check it out at Plotify.com, the platform for clothes and gadgets in movies and TV shows. Plotify.com Let me tell you about search engine optimization that is performance-based. It is SEOgame.com. Visit them online and see the difference. SEO Game puts in over 30 hours of work to start keyword phrase search engine optimization services without a setup fee. Cool? Yeah, it's very cool. If you don't like your results, you can opt out at any time before 30 days without paying a dime. At the end of 30 days, your first payment is due and you get billed monthly thereafter. Five keyword plans begin at $200 a week. 30 keyword plans begin at $500. If you want your business to grow, you need to get SEO game performance based. 
SEO. Go to the website right now, SEOgame.com. That's SEOgame.com. Listeners ask us all the time, how can we support the operation? I head over to our website at www.jiggyjaguar.com. That's right, jiggyjaguar.com. Click on the Amazon banner on our page. It will take you to Amazon. You will still see all the great prices, all the great selection, all the great convenience. But when you shop Amazon, we get a little bit of a credit from Amazon, and it helps us keep the operation going here. Recently, we had best-selling author Nash. National Award winner Dan Perkinson, and he was talking about Amazon. I listened to your promotion for Amazon.com. You can buy my, you can buy book one and book two, which just came out. Look so at that! I encourage your listeners to go there and and support your operation. You don't need to buy anything you don't want or need. Just do what you do on Amazon. Buy everything that you usually buy there, but do it through our link at com. We get a small percentage, as I mentioned earlier, and it helps really fund our operation. Thanks to our friends at Amazon.com, and thanks for you for supporting us, the great listeners of the world-famous Chiggy Chagwire radio broadcast. techno Mall. Over 2 million homes are burglarized in America each year. Remove your risk of burglary with secure, remote, invisible locks. Without a lock to pick, burglars will struggle to find a way into your home or your business. You can even secure your windows and glass entryways as well. Check out techno-mall.com for more information. Techno-mall.com. Okay, folks, let's talk about self-development, wealth creation, renewal, and rejuvenation. Are you stuck in a rut? Do you aspire to be something bigger, something better? Well, author Y.E. Shavola has penned two incredible books that will help guide you down a new path, a path that will lead towards self-development, wealth creation, renewal, and rejuvenation. Learn how to make your dreams a reality. You owe it to yourself and your loved ones. Y.E. Shavola's books are available on Amazon right now. How to Occupy Till Jesus Comes, Self-Development, and How to Occupy Till Jesus Comes, Wealth Creation. Get them at our website through our Amazon link at com. Find them on Amazon. Check out Y.E. Shavola's incredible books, How to Occupy Till Jesus Comes, Self-Development, and How to Occupy Till Jesus Comes, Wealth Creation today on Amazon. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners here at Transmedia Worldwide. There's nothing cooler than being an astronaut, but unfortunately, for most of us, it's never going to happen. The second coolest thing is the recent developments in virtual reality, mainly by the team behind the Oculus Rift. We intend on creating a high-quality VR experience, putting you inside the helmet of an astronaut in a series of exciting and realistic as possible scenarios. The goal is to walk the fine line between being an accurate simulation and enjoyable game experience. Check them out today at kickstarter.com. Search for EVA, the VR Astronaut Simulator and Game. That's EVA, the VR Astronaut Simulator and Game. Search for it on Kickstarter.com. Contribute today, and thanks for paying attention to us here at Transmedia Worldwide. So what's best, a patch or a plug? This is ASC Auto Professional Pam Oaks telling you that it's happened to all of us. You're driving down the road, you run over an object, it impales the tire, and you've got a flat. Roofing nails, heavy-duty staples, decorative automotive trim laying in the middle of the road, and it's got your name on it. So, when the inevitable happens, do you have your tech patch or plug that hole? I had a customer, like tens of thousands of drivers, that ran over a roofing nail. He stopped at one of those tire box stores for a fix. They plugged the hole. A week later, that plug began to leak. Always patch. Never plug a tire. Plugging will make the already Grand canyon size hole larger. Patching is chemically bonded to the tire, ensuring a secure fit without further damage. Remember, patch, never plug. Want to know more about your vehicle? Visit me at carcarefortheclueless.com, making you a savvy car consumer. Back to the Jiggy Jaguar Show on the network. Back here on the program, coast to coast and border to border. 32 minutes after the hour, Lil Ponte joins us. And uh, before we took the break, 
Uh, we were talking about your ATM could turn into a one-armed bandit. And, uh, Lo, you were telling me something about oligarchs and all sorts of different things, and I, I hated to catch up, but we just had to take a break there. Uh, well, pick up, pick up where you left off, my friend. Jakey, you have an empire to run. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Uh, so, so, yeah, a year ago in Cyprus, people wake up one day unexpectedly, their banks are locked. Their ATMs will not give them access to their bank accounts. Yeah. The government has seized all of their accounts under this new legal doctrine that affects us, too. In fact, the FDIC and the Bank of England signed a memo agreeing that that's U.S. doctrine as well. It's what European authorities now say will be the template for how they'll handle bank bailouts in the future. They'll just seize people's bank accounts to pay what wow. they need. Now, Now, here's what happened. The, the Russian oligarch, there were Russian billionaires who, who transitioned their account money, laundered it through Cyprus as a tax haven. Yeah. The government was at least expecting to get a lot there. But the government in Cyprus delayed things a few days, and suddenly when they got to the Russian bank accounts, they were all empty. <laughs> How could that be? Well, because the bank had closed down their branches in Cyprus, but they left open their branches in London and Moscow. So you wow. can your money. You could also fly corporate jets out of the country without a whole lot of problem. Now, what makes this even more fun yeah. is, remember, Russia goes into Crimea. The president, uh, our President Obama, says, well, we're going to seize Russian assets if you don't stop. You're bad, bad, bad. And Russia says, well, if you seize our assets, we'll seize your assets in Russia. You know, Pepsi gets 7% of all its worldwide revenue from Pepsi sales in Russia. We have GM and Ford factories there and so on. All those could be seized. And we then turned and said, by what legal doctrine, by what right do you say you have the right to seize U.S. property? And the chief Russian legislative analyst who passed this measure said, oh, well, don't you remember Cyprus that you agreed with? Cyprus is our legal precedent for seizing other people's assets. Wow. Interestingly, uh, while President Obama was taking two weeks to beat his chest and say, we're going to take Russian assets here in the U.S., guess what Russia was doing? Russia walked into the Federal Reserve Bank in New York and withdrew what had been held in deposit for them there, $105.1 billion dollars of federal res of uh, you know government notes of treasury paper that Russia owned that is more than a tenth of a trillion dollars that is the biggest single one blow one day withdrawal in the history of the federal reserve and president obama did nothing to prevent that a tenth of a trillion dollars taken out of the us bank by russia uh, russian companies also pulled more billions of dollars of their own out of the U.S. while well, we were being told that. So now twice, in Cyprus a year ago, and now in the U.S. in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> Russia was able to pull out vast amounts of money from banks that supposedly were going to constrict what they could take out. Now, one of the reasons people are not rushing to change ATMs as eagerly as they might, even though they now are much more vulnerable to hacking than ever before, yeah. because of this XP operating program thing. We are on the verge of a formal cashless society. Remember how in the book of Revelation, it said people would not be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast upon them. Yes. Well, take a good look at your credit cards. For uh, in the United States today, only 7% of purchases are actually made with cash money anymore. Almost all trends, and, and those are small ones like hamburgers, Starbucks coffee, all the big purchases are made with credit cards, with checks, with some kind of electronic money transfer. Uh, and that is what the cashless society will be like. Oh, by the way, we, we discovered from horror that's happening to a relative of ours, my wife and I discovered just how frightening this has become. You know what a hacker needs in order to tap into your bank account? and just bleed it off to a bank account of his own that may be a phony bank account. He needs two things. He needs your bank account number, and he needs your tracking number on the Wow. Account. Now, now, when you write somebody a check, do you know what two numbers are coded on the front of that check? Why, your account number and your tracking number. <laughs> so every time you write somebody wow. a check, large or small, 
you're giving them all the information they need to siphon money out of your bank account. I mean, these are the kind of things that Craig and I get into in this forthcoming book and in the Hoyt paper that's now out free for folks called, um, you know, Don't Bank on It. Yeah. There are 19 horrifying dangers about your bank account that you probably don't even know, including the fact that it isn't even your account. That too. So the bank's account, all, all they gave you was an IOU. And yet, that bank account is an investment. It's just that it is a zero-return, high-risk investment now. The kind that if it were a stock or a bond, you would never buy it in a million years. But you buy it every... I mean, you understand that the government is now practicing a thing called financial repression. They're yeah. deliberately holding the rate on bank accounts below the rate of inflation, meaning that inflation is eating up the purchasing power in your money faster than the bank is paying you interest which means you're losing money every day. You're being robbed right now. As oh, very much so. The bank account, they're siphoning the value out of the money in your bank account at this moment because of financial repression, and that is a deliberate policy. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. If people would like to get the white paper absolutely free or to get our latest book, The Great Withdrawal, How the Progressive's 100-Year Debasement of America and the Dollar Ends Absolutely Free, We'd be happy to send that to you, post-paid. We'd even pay for the phone call. Literally will not cost you a penny to get either one or both. Wow. Would, would you folks like the toll-free number? How do you, how do, how do, how does people take advantage of this? This is amazing. Yeah, and understand, this is because my, my co-author, Craig, just wants to save the future for his children. Like me, he just wants to bring back the Constitution, individual freedom, get us off the 100-year detour into big government that progressives have taken us on since Woodrow Wilson. Uh, and so he doesn't need the money. I mean, this is a guy with Mitt Romney-like wealth. He doesn't need to sell books. He just wants to put arms in your hands in, a way, in ways that you can protect yourself. It's also a survival guide so that we keep the saving remnant of the republic alive here to get us back to sound money and small government and big people and individual responsibility. And to get it all absolutely free, just call 800-630-1494. That's 1-800-630-1494. Or as I like to say, think of Columbus sailing the ocean blue in 1492. Only not quite. It's 800-630-1494. Just leave your name and number. We'll get back to you. Uh, this way we can find out if you'd rather have a, a Kindle kite type electronic thing to read on your computer uh, or device, uh, or if you prefer a paperback version of the book. And this way, this is the fourth book in our 12-book series. The Don't Bank on It book this summer will be the fifth. Uh, and that way we can let you know when future books in the series are coming out. We're just trying to show people, to educate people as to just how you have been manipulated and tricked by inflation and a whole of a, a lot of other scams the government runs that are picking your pocket every day. Oh, very much so. And, and <laughs> very know, much so there, Lowell. You're light informing people that, uh, of this, even though those who do so, as we all know, are at great danger. Oh, by, oh, I forgot to mention, the IRS also did not upgrade its computers from XP. Oh, that's so, nice. So the, so the <laughs> that's fantastic. The computers are also at higher risk of hacking. Well, let's do this. We've got uh, Lowell. Can you hang out for another 15 minutes with us? Oh, absolutely. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by uh, Frank Savalto from the New Media Journal, and we're going to discuss a little bit of this and some of the news headlines and get Lowell's views on those as well. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more here on the Big Broadcast. 